Hello everyone. Uh, so I am going to share the solution for question nine for the recently concluded uh, Pure Math One A Level Pure Math One Variant Three, May June 2025. Uh, I have received some requests, uh, some requests for sharing the solutions for question nine, which uh, is a coordinate geometry of the circle question. Um, it relates to coordinate geometries, of course, and also a, a sort of circular measure. So um, it's uh, how many marks? It's uh, I think it's nine marks in total. So we'll, we'll see later. Um, so let's just go through the solution. All right. So uh, question nine: three points P, Q, and R have coordinates P negative thirteen five, Q five one, and R two. K, where K is a constant. It is given that angle PRQ is a right angle. Uh, first part, part A, show that one of the possible values of K is 10 and find the other possible value. All right, so th this is a showing question. And so anything that you do that leads uh, to the finding the value of K being 10, or if you substitute K equals 10 into a um, a valid equation and you get the equation to be true that's uh, one way to show that uh, the value of k one of the possible values of k is 10 so you don't have to really go through uh, all the way to solving actually so i'm just going to show you how it's done so we use the fact that angle prq is a right angle all right so that means that the gradient of pr multiplied with the gradient of rq is equal to negative one, right? The property of the uh, gradient of perpendicular lines, right? Gradients of perpendicular lines, when you multiply their gradients together, you get negative one. So we go ahead and set up for gradient of PR and gradient of RQ and make it equal to one. Notice that this um, results in an equation with only one unknown. So there is a possible solution to this right so we go ahead and uh, simplify it to this right so it becomes k minus 5 times k minus 1 equals 45 now what you can do from this point is actually just go ahead and expand that and solve and you'll get that one of the answers is 10. however because we, we just want to show that one of the possible values is 10 right for k is 10 we can just substitute k equals 10 into this equation and show that we do indeed get 45. That's already enough for you to be able to show that one of the possible values of k is 10. Okay, that's that's something that you can already do. So just substitute k equals 10, right? And this is super easy. You don't even have to calculate using the calculator. You can see that 10 minus 5 is 5, and 10 minus 1 is 9. So 5 times 9, it is indeed 45. So the equation uh, is true, right? When k equals to 10. So k is one of the possible, uh, sorry, 10 is one of the possible values of k. So we have shown that, right? Great. So now, uh, what we have to do now is to do the second task, which is to find the other possible value, which means we, we should, you know, uh, expand this and make it into a quadratic equation. So if you do that properly, right, expand k minus 5 times k minus 1, um, uh, you should get k squared minus 6k plus 5, and the other side here equals 45, right? And then you bring the 45 to the other side, and you get this quadratic equation. Uh, again, after this, um, you, have, you can now solve the quadratic. You can factorize this already. You already know one value of k, which is 10. So you can think about, hey, I'll just factorize this with k minus 10, right? And I'll get the other. So you can see here, this is already negative 40. So if one of uh, the factors is k minus 10, then the other must be k plus 4, right? So this is very quickly done. You don't even have to use your calculator or, or um, use a quadratic formula or completing the squares. This is very simple because one of the factors is already known. So the factorization becomes very simple. All right, so k minus 10 times k plus 4 equals 0. So since we already know that k equals 10, right? So the other possible value will come from this factor k plus 4 equals 0, which means k equals negative 4, right? So this is part A. Um, uh, this is a four-mark question. 
uh, you might get a B1 mark from uh, setting up the perpendicular gradients um, and uh, showing uh, that when you substitute k equals 10 into this equation will give you 45 or you might also choose to actually go ahead and solve and get k equals 10 as one of the solution and the other one as k equals negative 4 that's also possible as well so you'll get uh, i would say that you'll get a b1 mark for the first setup and then uh, solving or showing here this one the sh this showing here is probably an m1 or an a1 uh, solving the quadratic is another m1 and then final answer for k equals negative 4 that's also another a1 so i would say either one b1 one m1 and two a1 or uh, one B1 uh, and two M1 and then one A1. But uh, whatever it is, um, these are quite simple to do. And I hope, uh, uh, you know, this question, I was told that it would probably be quite uh, complicated, especially part B, but uh, I am confident that most people would probably get part A very easily. Okay, so let's move on to part B. So part B, all right, now it is now given that k equals 10. So we're now setting k equals 10. Uh, a circle passes through the points B, Q, and R. Find the equation of tangent to the circle at R. Give the answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals 0, where A, B, and C are integers. Right? This is fine mark question. All right, so let's look at the situation first. Make sure that we no longer use the value k. Right? Don't use k anymore. Right? Some students, they, they forget this and they keep using the k k is now 10 so we will replace k equals 10 that means right if you look at the list for the coordinates of the points p q and r right you should update it and there there's no longer k there that should be 10 okay so p is negative 13 5 q is uh, 5 1 and uh, r is 2 10 and remember from the question a part a that p r and q r are perpendicular so one of the ways that we can realize what we can do here is we can uh, try to visualize it, okay? So P, R, and Q. You don't have to do this very accurately, but you have P, R, and Q, and uh, they make a right angle at R, right? The right angle is at R. Now, if you have a circle that goes through P, R, and Q, right? And there is a right angle here, right? That means, right, if you draw a line P to Q, right, that would be a diameter line. Okay, so and since the uh, PQ is a diameter line, then its center, the uh, sorry, the midpoint of PQ would be the center of the circle. Okay, so uh, this is from circular measure that you have learned before, probably in uh, grade ten. Uh, yeah, grade ten of math or grade ten of at math. I'm not sure which one, but uh, you should have already known this, right? You should realize this after this. After visualizing this question, you should realize that you can actually get the center of the circle directly from just finding the midpoint of PQ. Now, there's a reason why you want to find this center, um, uh, this center coordinate. So I'll, I'll tell you later why. All right. So we now we have the center, which is the midpoint of PQ. We go ahead and find that midpoint of PQ, right? Um, let's call it C, by the way. So uh, we do find the midpoint of PQ, and that is negative 4, 3. That is our center. All right. Now, the question wants the equation of tangent to the circle at R. Now, uh, that means there's a tangent line at R. What, what we should know is a tangent to the circle at any point of tangency would be perpendicular to the radius from the center to that point of tangency. All right. So basically here, tangent to the circle at R will be perpendicular to the radius CR, okay? Something that looks like this, okay? So, you have CR here. It's a radius line from the center to the point of tangent CR. And um, the line, the tangent line at R, will be perpendicular to CR, okay? So, that's why we needed uh, C just now, so that we can actually get the gradient of CR. So, the gradient of CR, we already know what R is. We already know what C is. So we can use those coordinates to find the gradient of CR. And we'll get 7 over 6. Now, because the tangent line would have a perpendicular gradient, so uh, that means the, the gradient of the tangent line will be the negative reciprocal of the gradient of CR. 
which means um, you know just flip and change the sign you get negative 6 over 7 now again uh, the equation of a straight line right tangent line is a straight line so you just use the equation of straight line y equals mx plus c substitute the m there so y equals negative 6 over 7x plus c uh, all you need to find now is what is the value of c for now right what is the value of c just substitute the point the coordinate for the point of tangency right because that's the only point that we know that uh, this line uh, goes through so we're going to use 2 10 okay substitute 2 uh, into x and 10 into y right and simplify <coughs> or make c the subject and you'll get 82 over 7 okay put that back into the equation and you get this equation this equation is in the form y equals mx plus c now go back to the question and see is that the form that they want right here it does say it give you answer in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero so there's one more step you have to do and that is to rearrange and make um, it in uh, rewrite this in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero where a b and c are integers so if you do that you'll get 6x plus 7y minus 82 equals zero <coughs> and that is the solution for uh, the this question question b okay the one that i think some people find very hard now <coughs> I noticed that uh, this question has only five marks and the reason why it's very important to notice that the question is five marks is because you will know that there must be something simple about this question. Now the, the usual way uh, to find uh, the center of uh, a circle that goes to, through three different points is that you have to find the uh, perpendicular bisector of the chords PR and RQ. Right. If you use the perpendicular bisector equation for PR and perpendicular bisector equation for RQ, they will then intersect at the center. So that's another way of finding the center, but it's a very long way. And it, it doesn't require that PR and RQ are perpendicular. So if PR and RQ are not perpendicular, you have to find the two equations. Each of them are about the perpendicular bisector of course. Because... Um, the perpendicular bisector of chords of a circle will always intersect at the center. So that's how to find that center. So when I look at this question and it says five points or five marks, I know that uh, it's not going to be that long. It's not going to be that complicated. So there must be some special property that we can utilize. And indeed it was, right? It was uh, special because PR and RQ are perpendicular, causing the uh, line PQ to be a diameter line. So the center can be found really easily by uh, just using the midpoint. Okay, so that's why this is only a five mark question. So, uh, in terms of the marks distribution, uh, getting the center is, I think, an, uh, I think it will be an A1 or a B1. And then uh, setting up, uh, finding the tangent, that's an M1. Uh, and then uh, getting the correct, uh, setting up the equation for straight line is another m1 uh, writing the final answer uh, as uh, the correct way right 6x plus 7y minus 82 equals 0 uh, is in the correct form that's an a1 so you might get a b1 for the first part here uh, uh, setting up the gradient there'll, there'll be an m1 another m1 for setting up the straight line equation solving for correct c i think for correct c is probably an, an a1 so it could be 1B1, 2M1, and 2A1 marks. It could be. It's just my prediction. Okay? So, anyway, it's a five-mark question. You should be spending about five minutes. I would imagine that this can take more than five minutes for some people. Uh, but if you're very familiar with all the uh, circular theorems, right? Circular measure theorems and equation of circles, coordinate geometry of circles, uh, perpendicular lines, right? Uh, this should come uh, as easy as and as natural uh, to you. Okay, so all the best. And if you do indeed get 6x plus 7y minus 82 equals 0 as your answer, then you did a good job.